This is the last section of probability generating functions. And this is the sum of independent random variables. So if we've got two independent random variables, that means that you've got two events where um, one is not affecting another. If we want to find out the probability generating function of one and the other, we multiply their probability generating function. So I'll write that down. So if we want the probability generating function of of two independent they must be independent random variables let's call them x and y then uh, the probability generating function uh, is the product or we just multiply um, product of the probability generating functions of X and Y okay of X and Y and that's sort of written in this sort of statement up here yeah so it's almost like if it's and we multiply and that's something that's come up before in lots of other areas of probability when it's and we multiply okay two independent discrete random variables x and y have probability generating functions in a given here so this is the probability generating function for x, because it's got a little x there. This is the probability generating function for y. Find the probability generating function of the random variable z, x plus y. So you can think of this plus as meaning and. And what do we do when we have and in probability? We multiply. So I need to multiply these two probability generating functions. So I could start by writing down that the probability generating function for Z is equal to the one for X times by the one for Y. So even before we do any working, we might want to uh, write that out. So next is just multiplication. So I've got half plus half T times by a third plus half t plus one over six t squared. Okay, and this is just multiplying out brackets now. We just need to be careful when we do it. So a half times a third, a half times a half t, a half times uh, one six t squared, so I'm halfway there. Now multiply everything by half t. So uh, half t times a third. So that's one six t. Um, and then a half t times a half t. So it's going to be a quarter t squared. Then a half t times a six uh, t squared is going to be one over 12 t cubed. So obviously this needs tidying up so our probability generating function well now I have just a 6 so I can write that as a 6 or 6 times t to the power 0 uh, let's highlight these it might be a bit easier so I've dealt with that now let's do our t's so I've got a quarter t plus of 6 t now I'm using my calculator, I'm being very lazy here. Really, I should know how to do this in my head. A quarter plus a six, five over 12. So five over 12 T. All right, let's move on to our next ones. So they're gonna be the T squareds. So a 12th and a quarter. So a quarter is three twelfths 
plus one twelfth. So that's four twelfths. So let's write that as plus four twelfths t squared and then just one twelfth t cubed. Now what I can do is I can factorize it, can't I? Be useful. Um, everything can be divided by a twelfth, including the six. So one twelfth. So that will give me um, two, or two t to the power zero, plus five uh, t, plus four t squared, plus t cubed. And part B says uh, use the probability generating functions to show that the mean of said is equal to the mean of x plus the mean of y. So let's start with the mean of x. So the mean of x we're going to get by differentiating the probability generating function for x and substituting in 1. So if I go back to my probability generating function for x, this should be easy to differentiate. That will just give me uh, a half. So let's write down e of x equals a half. So I don't even need to substitute t into it because um, there's not going to be a, a, a t left. I suppose I should write down here that actually that this is equal to a half. Yeah, probably not much point. Right, let's now work out the mean of y. So we need to differentiate the PGF for y, substitute 1 in. So if we differentiate it, we will get um, a half, which we need to times by 1. And then um, we'll have 2, 6, so plus two six t so two six times by one so that will give me e of y equals to basically a half plus two six so a half is three six plus two six will give me five over six okay so i've got the e of x and the e of y what I need to show is that when I do the e, e of z it's basically a half plus five, five six. So let's now work out e of z using the, the probability function um, that we've basically got written um, up here. Yeah, or the unfactorized one, it doesn't matter. So that'll be one twelfth. Um, actually, let me write down write it down fully. So that'll be G X not G Z sorry G Z dash at one. Right, so that will be uh one twelfth times by what a two disappears when we differentiate. Then we'll have just five and then plus um eight so it'd be eight T so eight times one and then t cubed will be 3t squared or 3 times 1 squared. So we'll work out what that is. E of z. So, oh sorry, that should be 1 twelfth outside the bracket, not a half, because it was a twelfth. So 1 twelfth. And then in brackets, 5 plus 8 times 1 plus 3 times 1 squared and we get 4 over 3 which is 1 and a third now uh, e of x plus e of y equals a half plus 5 over 6 now what does that give us? calculator time 5 over 6 and we get 4 over 3 so what can we say we can say that e of z equals e of x plus e of y 
as required. Done. Okay, a random variable x has a probability generating function given by this. Okay, write down the probability distribution of x. So that means put it in a table. So the outcomes, remember they start from zero because you're gonna have t to the power zero. And um, it's only gonna be zero and one. So that line can be much shorter than that. There we go. And the probability for each one. So for zero, it's two thirds. And for one, it's a third. So remember, you just need the coefficients of t to get those um, probabilities. Right, okay, part B says um, y equals 2x plus 1. Write down the probability distribution of y and hence find the probability distribution of y. So remember, with this type of problem, it's only the outcomes that change, not the probabilities. Okay, so the probabilities of getting these y's are still the same. So they're still gonna be two thirds and a third. But what happens is the outcomes of x get multiplied by two and add one. So we do zero uh, times by two, add one. So the outcome for y is gonna be one, two times zero plus one is one. When the outcome for x is one, so we do two times one plus one, the outcome for y is three. So there's our probability distribution for y. Then part c says verify that uh, g of y, the probability distribution or the, the PGF for y equals t times the PGF for x t squared. Right, so let's start by writing down what the PGF for y is. So I used to write an x, put y there. So we'll have two thirds as the first coefficient of t to the power one, because the outcome is one, or just t, plus a third times by the coefficient of t cubed. Yeah, so remember the um, outcomes are going to be the powers of t so all we need to do now is to work out t times the problem the pgf for x and with t squared in it so let's see what that's going to be so we know that the probability generating function for x is two thirds plus a third t so if um, it's t squared rather than t, then the probability generating function for x of t squared rather than t, so we'll just replace uh, any of the um, t's with t squared. So it's gonna be two thirds plus, so that get, t gets Next to the third gets replaced with t squared. Um, and then the whole lot gets multiplied by t. So that means the function that they were asking about, let's just tidy up that t there. So I'll take what I've just done before, times it by t, so I'll get two thirds t plus a third t cubed and I get the same thing as required. I can see that with this I get two thirds t plus a third t cubed and with this I get the same thing two thirds t plus a third t cubed so I can say that uh, this statement is true okay as required and I've just proved it by the stuff that's in the red boxes. And in fact, in the blue box, and now in the blue cloud, you can see uh, a general statement, 
where if I've got uh, a random variable x and this is its pgf, then the pgf of y, uh, which is a times x plus b, is given by this. And we just prove that in the last statement. So you should now be able to do exercise 7D on pages 141 to 142 of the textbook, then complete it by doing the mixed exercise afterwards. So um, if we've got uh, X and Y, uh, if they're independent, if X and Y are independent, then the uh, and I want to know the probability generating function of Z, the PGS of Z, if I have X plus Y. They can remember that we multiply, then we multiply the PGS of X and Y. Don't know why I put the word and before x of x and y. So that will be the probability generating function for z is equal to the probability generating function for x times by the probability generating function for y. So that's a useful statement. And there's also another. Uh, little statement that we can use that we did in the second example. So um, if we've got a discrete random variable x and y equals a times x plus b. So in other words, all we've done is um, multiply the outcomes by something and added something. Then the PGF for y the PGF for Y is equal to T to the power of B times by the uh, PGF of X T to the power of A. So the A that's here becomes the power there and the B that's here becomes the power uh, there.